let's have a look at how to create and run macros. But first, what is a macro? A macro is simply a recording of a series of steps. So for example, if you very frequently um, select some text and change the color fill to yellow with a red font style, you can automate that process by creating a macro that record those key presses. Just undo that and we'll give it a go. The menu we want is tools and then we drop down to macro. In the sub menu, the first thing I want to talk about is security. Macros can hide all kinds of dangerous programming, so you do have to be careful. There are four levels of security. I've got mine set on low, but as you can see, that's not recommended. I only do that because I know I'm only working in a very secure environment. Most people would have it set as high or medium. So high will only allow signed macros from trusted sources. And I'm not here to explain how to get trusted sources macros. Medium, however, lets you take the choice. A menu, uh, a dialog box will appear giving you the choice of whether or not to run the macros in that document. So my suggestion to you is that medium is probably best. Every time you open a document with a macro in it, you'll get a message saying, is this okay? Okay, let's record a macro. Tools, drop down to macro, and select record new macro. I have a little dialog box to fill in. First, we need a name. So let's put this as change color. Just if you want to use more than one word, use an underscore because you can't use spaces. We can assign the macro to a keyboard shortcut. So for example, if now if we put control X, it means every time you press control X, the macro will run. That can be very useful, but just be careful. Your computer system will already have a lot of control sequences built in and whatever you type in there will automatically overwrite what is already set up. So if I put control A in there, for example, control A normally, selects everything on the screen or in the application control a if i put it in there will then run the macro so you're destroying what's already there so you've got to be using that with care where do we want to store the macro selected by this workbook is the standard but there are other choices and i'll just mention personal macro workbook if you want the macro to be available to you on every document that you create on your computer, every Excel document that you create on your computer, then store it in the personal macro workbook. That will make this available at all times. If you want the macro to be just fixed to this one document that you are working on, then select this workbook. Because I'm just playing around creating macros, I'm just going to select it to this workbook. And then OK. We've got the recording macro toolbar there. Now nothing is happening. All that happens is that it records your key presses. So it doesn't matter if I take a little bit of time not doing anything. It's not a time-based thing. So we want to create a macro that's going to change the cell formatting and the color of the font. It doesn't matter whether which cells I've got selected for this. I've just got one cell selected. I'm going to click on the fill color and change it to yellow. That sequence of key presses has been recorded. I now change the font color to red, and that's recorded also. Once you've finished your recording, press the stop button. Don't close the toolbar, stop recording. Recording stopped. I can now undo the changes that I made while I was creating the macro. Let's see if it works. I want to add that formatting to our titles. So to do that, we need to run the macro. I select Tools, drop down to Macro, and this time we're selecting the Macros menu. Here we have a list of all the macros that are available to us to use. 
either in all the open workbooks or in just in this workbook. If you've only got one workbook open, then there won't be any difference there. Um, but you choose the macro that you want to work with and then simply run. Before I do that, notice if you want to delete a macro, that's there also. But we want to run the macro and it applies our formatting to the cells that we had selected. You can do that as many times as you want. Select your cells, tools, down to macros, macros, select the macro that you want to work with and then run. And there's your macro is created. Let's try that again. We'll create a new macro this time to insert a header. So let's select tools, macro, record a macro. Let's call this insert header. Go to store it just in this workbook. Click on OK. We are now recording, but it's not time based, it's just button press. So I'm going to do view. Header and footer. Remember, it's recording this as I press. Select the header that I want to work with. And OK. And then stop recording. That macro is now recorded. Before I can see whether it works, let's just remove that header and footer again. OK, so we've got no header and footer on now. Let's try the macro. Tools macro, macros, choose the macro that you want to work with and then run. Notice it's working. It's done now. Let's have a look and see whether that's worked. View, header and footer and there's the header that's been applied. So that's macros. Um, on tools, macro we can record a macro from there or we can run a macro from here when we run a macro we can select one and delete it and then also not really part of what we need to be doing here but i'll just show you that again on the dialog box if you want to make modifications to a macro you can edit the macro and it brings up the vba programming behind that Sometimes that works. Uh, for example, it can be very easy to see certain things. There's a colour index of three. If I want to change the colour, I'm not going to get into the programming language, but I can change that to four and it'll give me a different colour. It might be that you're printing out six copies and you want to change it to seven copies. So sometimes it's very easy to see what you could change in there to change your macro. And then you will just close that down and that macro will have been changed. I don't know what colour four will do. Let's just try it. See if we can see any changes. Right, it's giving me a green colour. So that's macros. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at how to add those macros onto toolbar buttons. But for the moment, macros, tools, macro, record a macro, run a macro. Have a go. You can do all kinds of things. You can do sorting, formatting. You can create macros that print 10 copies at the simple press of a button.